Hey traders, welcome to another crypto market update. We're going to be first be looking at the US dollar to uh, understand what's happening on that front. Very important asset to be looking at right now. It is pretty negatively correlated. When the US dollar is moving to the upside, Bitcoin is dropping. And when Bitcoin is having these huge pumps to the upside, the US dollar is falling. And a little bit of fundamentals. In my opinion, the US dollar is going to inevitably fail. Every fiat currency has. So the Fed is at a situation where they have two options, keep interest rates low, adding stimulus, just keep on rolling with what's been happening for the last couple decades. The US dollar will inevitably fail. If you print enough of any currency, it will not hold value. And we're seeing that right now. Since March, we dropped over 10%. Let's say April, we've dropped nine, let's say 10%, just under 10%. So pretty substantial losses. If you are able to raise interest rates to lower the inflation, a lot of zombie companies in the United States will not be able to survive. So then there's a lot of job losses, stock market collapses, and that's not something that the Fed policy makers want either. So they're in a difficult situation, and I think they're going to continue on with the low interest rates and s stimulation and really just keeping the ball rolling how it has been for the last uh, couple of decades here. So. We're now going to continue on with this analysis, looking at a little bit more of the technicals. We are starting off with the daily chart. We have to understand that this 88, 89 zone is a major level of support. Strong level, we can see quickly looking at the weekly chart. This is a major level we can see right here of support. When we zoom back even further, potential double top with a completion at around the 80 to 79 zone. Major, major dump if we are able to get it. Dropping below this level of support, completing the uh, double double top formation. So we're going to be on the large time frame looking out for that. But in terms of the smaller time frame, we actually saw a little bit of a push from the US dollar from the bulls, which definitely makes sense because we are seeing a little bit of a pullback from BTC, which is definitely needed. I think that it had a massive impulsive push and forming some consolidation at, let's say, above $30,000, forming a series of lower highs to contract the volatility and get that next setup for the expansion phase is healthy. But jumping back into the US dollar, Right now, we did see a little bit of a descending wedge formation right here. Not ideal because you only have two validations of a descending level of support. You do have three validations of a resistance, so that's nice to see. But uh, we got a little bit of an impulsive push from the bulls. What we're seeing and what we're expecting right now, in my opinion, is ideally a hold of this level of current resistance, which is at around 90, and then we see that hold, and then we see a higher low get held, maybe at this zone, and then everyone's thinking maybe a reverse head and shoulders, but no, 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 what we are, what I think is potentially going to happen is we're going to be forming a higher low, and then a higher low, and then we're going to be dumping back to the downside, forming an ascending triangle. So that's going to be my overall approach that we're going to be looking at the market with. Now, some of the things that could occur that would break that formation or break invalidate that would be if we see a break above this zone right here. So if we start to see a break and trading above the 90 zone, that would be an instant, uh, unfortunately, something that we can't do. And then we may be looking for a nice higher low and then a higher low. And then you could be looking for maybe a wedge formation like so. And then next move to the downside, similar to what we saw right here. But overall, we are only really looking for uh, opportunities where the US dollar goes down and things that are negatively correlated move to the upside. So in short, I think there's going to be a higher low, a higher low. We connect the higher lows. We have a horizontal level of resistance. We contract in price, and then we have an expansion phase going to the downside, testing this low right here to see if we're able to break this potential double bottom formation. And we actually get a failure of this zone, and then we start trading below this 88 zone. That's, I think, where we're really going to start to plummet to the downside, which means that, in my opinion, Bitcoin is moving to the upside. I think stocks are also going to rally. A lot of things are going to be bullish, and it's an opportunity that uh, does not come around very often. So now we're going to be going on to 
BTC wanted to have a really good understanding of where we currently are with the US dollar. It makes sense because while the US dollar is rallying, we're actually seeing BTC move to the downside, which even just further validates the fact that they are very negatively correlated, which is exactly what we're looking for. The Fed keeps on printing money, creating stimulus. They are going to devalue the US dollar. And then funds, firms, traders around the world that hold the US dollar is going to look for safe haven assets to hold their uh, hold their wealth basically because they can't have faith in the US dollar. Bitcoin is going to be that thing that they're going to be looking at is the overall thesis of the fundamentals of BTC. So when we are looking at the large time frame here, let's just jump to the weekly chart. I'm going to get a little drink of uh, this beverage here. So this 30k zone, we've been talking about it in our Discord, explaining why it is such a major level. First off, why is it such a major level? Obviously, round number, very psychological zone, 40k, 30k, 50k. These numbers are very important because they're extremely, they're, they're whole numbers, right? People look at them and say, um, I'm going to sell at this number because it's a whole number. That's just one a simple reason uh, as a fact. You're not going to pick like uh, 3,000 or 35,516 as, as a take profit or as a level where you want to look to potentially sell or get in or get out or zones of sensitivity where a lot of people are looking. So 30K, strong level of sensitivity. We retested the previous resistance, which we'll look in the smaller time frame. Number two, we see the geometry of this large symmetrical triangle and we will look at the BLX just because it is a little bit easier for us to uh, look at the larger time frames with. We see this nice symmetrical triangle we see right here, not as well respected, but we see the geometry from the opening of the symmetrical triangle turns to a nice level of support. And this geometry creates zones of sensitivity. So we can see right here, yes, it did fail, but we did get a hold of the support on a large time frame, And then we get our next rally to the upside. And that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen right now is we saw a nice strong push to the upside. We're looking at the geometry of the actual size of the symmetrical triangle. We form it to the breakout for our first major impulsive push. We break above the zone of sensitivity and we're going to hold it for a new level of support is the overall thesis. So when we are looking at the daily now, let's just shift the... Also, when we're quickly looking at the weekly, look how bullish these... Uh, volume bars are massively bullish. Now, the daily, not so much, but it's nice. In my opinion, I like to see a little bit of consolidation. It's not so bad. And the ideal situation for me, at least, is if we see something like this, a series of lower highs with a 30,000 ish dollar level of support held. And then we see a nice contraction in the volatility and then we are able to get a very early entry before the massive expansion phase which is going to continue the price of BTC moving to the upside. So I think we do have a little bit of waiting to do like we looked at with the US dollar. We do see a little bit of hesitation from the bulls saying we don't want to give up that easily. So I think there is going to be some consolidation for the US dollar, which means there's probably going to be some consolidation for BTC, which is definitely not a bad thing. And if you definitely if you missed out on this move from like 10K, I would say this is the next major opportunity where you could be loading up on bags, especially if you have that 30K zone as a strong level of support that's holding. It does look like it is right now already. So we will be expecting that to hold. Now, if it doesn't, obviously we have to change our game plan, change our bias. But even if we are seeing something, let's say like this, where you get a slightly series of lower lows and you get a more aggressive series of lower highs, that could be a nice wedge. I'm my overall bias for Bitcoin is long. I'm not looking to short, just zero reason for me to short at this point. I think that the bull run is definitely still very early and this is just the major first setup 
on a daily chart 12 hour to really get the uh, next impulsive push on way because the market needs to breathe there needs to be consolidation you can't have a forever trending market it's just not a thing you need to have these contractions and consolidations and they're actually very necessary and healthy for the market as well as very profitable if you know how to capitalize on them and that's what we're going to be hopefully going over through with these videos if you are uh following along you've definitely made some money hopefully if you've uh, definitely paid attention so this is this is going to be something that we will keep in that we will keep an eye on because this is going to be the next big opportunity in our opinion not really going to dive into a smaller time frame than maybe like the four hour or one hour just because we had a massive impulsive push we think that there's going to be some consolidation here there's no real major point to just diving into a smaller time frame because i'm just going to be very patient uh, for the next major trade, there's just no point to have an entry here. Um, I would rather wait for confirmation because we had a massive expansion in volatility. There's going to have to be some level of contraction. At least that's what I have the most edge trading. So why would I not wait for that setup? So right now, what we're going to be looking for is potentially a nice lower high from this high, so this high is at like 41K. We might see a lower high somewhere around there. Ideally, that would be really nice to see. And then maybe like another lower high right here. And then what we would do is connect the lower highs and boom, you have yourself a nice descending formation where you get a nice contraction with the price holding the $30,000 zone. So that is gonna be where our focus is. If something changes, obviously we will have to change our overall approach within the market. But as of right now, that's going to be the main opportunity that I currently see when we are looking at the US dollar in conjunction with BTC because they are negatively correlated. You have to take a look at both of them because if US dollar is looking very bullish, probably a good chance that Bitcoin is not going to be doing very well if it actually breaks out and vice versa. So we're now going to be looking at uh, some some tools for BTC as well as the altcoin market. And the first thing we're gonna be looking at is going to be the dominance. We've had a ton of volatility for the BTC.D chart, which is the market cap of BTC dominance. So what this represents is out of the entire cryptocurrency market, um, if you added up every single coin of every single project and BTC was included as well, BTC would take up 69% of the total market cap, which is pretty significant. And that's why we always want to uh, make sure that everyone is looking at Bitcoin because it's going to be a major player when you are trading altcoins. So lots of volatility. Uh, in short, we do see a slight break of this descending trend line there and then a retest holding that 65% level. And if we do start breaking the 73, definitely could be a little bit devastating for the altcoins. I'm just going to be drawing this zone right here. I do see this nice ascending zone like so. Going to be incorporating that within the chart. So what we currently see right now is if we look at just the horizontal zone for the top, so we see previous major level of resistance, resistance, resistance. This level is a major level of resistance at around 75%. And we do see a nice support held multiple times. So what we're looking for right now is a current squeeze. Yes, we've already broken above this zone like so. So we've broken above this zone. We see a nice level of support right here. We see a nice level of resistance right here. So we're contracting and we also have a ascending support coming right here. So if you were accounting for all the pushes and forces coming into the market, you would have a decent amount of support coming in here, coming in here. You've already broken the resistance. So you have one shield of the bears broken. And if you break the next shield right here at 75, you have the opportunity to get a, a tremendous amount of BTC uh, dominance recovered from its initial fall in 2017. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I do think as the bull market progresses, we will see a drop in the overall BTC dominance because there's gonna be more speculation, but we have to we have to wait right because this like in 2017 there was a lot of speculation but a lot of the retail traders were pushing the market up 
not a lot of funds and firms and institutional money was coming in. So at this point, yes, the bull market is going to be just that much more aggressive because the institutional funds, firms, and uh, I guess accredited investors, you could call them as well, um, do have more capital, obviously. So that's going to play a part, but the actual flow of capital is going to be different because funds and firms are a lot more systematic with their investments, unlike the retail crypto trader back in 2017. Funds and firms are strategic, they have partners, they discuss, they go over investments to ensure that they are well managed and have mitigated risk or at least uh, hedged risk to some degree. So having a strategic plan definitely makes you want to be more methodical when investing. And I think people are going to be really just selecting BTC and Ethereum and, and a few others, but I would say mainly Bitcoin. And the reason is, is because of the US dollar failure. If we're looking at it fundamentally, a lot of people are looking at BTC because of the fact that the US dollar is dropping. It's a hedge against inflation. It happened before, right? Back when the 40s and 50s and, and, and really 30s, they were printing a lot of money and they had very low interest rates for basically a decade. And this created a lot of prosperity in the short term. But then over time, the US dollar was devaluing so fast that they had major inflation. It was also, it was also called the oil shock, but basically prices were going up substantially. And I think we are entering that phase right now. And during that initial first massive inflationary period for the United States, gold went up astronomically. And I think that now Bitcoin is going to be the new gold for institutional funds and firms because of the fact it's so new. The market cap is a lot smaller than gold. So then there's more opportunity. So there's going to be a lot of funds and firms looking at Bitcoin as a investment and even if it's a hedge 1% of their portfolio if all these huge corporations and banks and institutions have 1 2 3% of their portfolio in BTC think of how much flow of capital is going into bitcoin so i i think it's going to be different than 2017 you know we could see a resurgence of the bitcoin dominance just because of the facts that we talked about in the last 5 minutes we have no idea right it's only just looking at it and trying to hypothesize about different situations is, is great, but the only way you can find out is just waiting. So that's going to be the current opportunity right now. I see a resistance. If it breaks below 75, I think we're going to get a massive rally for the Bitcoin dominance. Um, I think there's going to be some hesitancy right now just because we think Bitcoin's going to consolidate. The US dollar, I think, is going to consolidate. And I think a lot of markets are going to consolidate right now. So we are going to get a little bit of consolidation, but the next big break will either be breaking this ascending zone right here, because then we break the series of higher lows and then we make a lower low from this low, and that's gonna be starting to trend to the downside, or we could see a break of the resistance where we hold the higher lows, we break this major level of resistance, and we see a massive surge in BTC dominance. So it'd be interesting to see how the funds and firms are going to be acting once bull runs get like to 10x and right now we've basically doubled like from let's say when a lot of the funds and firms started to really invest um i guess micro sailor and micro strategy and all that they definitely invested early but you are starting to see people start to pile in right now at these prices which is pretty substantial so that's going to be a little bit of discussion on the btc dominance i'm just going to be checking the time just make sure we're not going too far and then the last thing we're going to be looking at is the BTC volatility. So let's just go here. So when we're looking at the Bitcoin volatility on the seven day, we do see huge contraction in volatility. And then you get the expansion phase to the upside. So we've really never had more volatility than we had back in March of 2020 when we had that huge COVID crash, 50% drop in BTC in a single day. It was absolute mad, but we are kind of nearing at that zone right now. And uh, I don't think that this volatility can last forever. So I think this does just confirm our overall thesis that we are going to see some consolidation here. Maybe 
I would say definitely January and even going into February, which would not be a bad thing because at the end of the day, we need contractions, we need corrections in a strong bullish market. And at the end of the day, these are opportunities that you should be trying to capitalize in. So thank you very much for watching. We truly appreciate it. Hopefully you are having a wonderful first start to 2021. And until next time, have a good one, traders.